Well, hi, everybody. Once again, on behalf of Q Sports International and Bad Boys Billiard Productions, welcome to the finals of the 2014 U.S. Bar Table Nine Ball Championships. Ken Schumann here with the TAR crew, Justin, along with Andy and Tim. And we are ready to bring you a nine ball champion here, either after this set or one more. Torsten Holman fought his way all the way through the one loss side, just defeated Skylar Woodward in a terrific match. And now he's got the task of having to beat Shane Van Boning twice in order to become the champion. It's true double elimination. These are races to nine. He has to win two sets, race to nine, to be the champion. If Shane wins the first set, he's the champ. If not, we'll have a one final set. Torsten wins the all-important lag. And as you saw in the last match, he has gone to the soft break. And we expect that to continue. So here we go for the championship. And the one didn't come down as far as he hoped. And it doesn't even look like he can bank it. At least it doesn't from here. He's looking at it. If he can bank it, he will. Just hard to see whether the seven's got enough of it blocked. Well, 150 players started and 148 of them are gone. These two men battling it out for the right to call themselves men's nine ball champion. Shane Van Boning has not yet lost a set in the rotation games. He won the 10 ball division undefeated and he's undefeated in the nine ball division. So can Torsten be the man to do it? Well, he's got the game to do it but there is no better player in the world right now than the South Dakota kid. If he pushed for the bank here, I'm really surprised that he left this. I don't think he left him a bank. He did. My guess is it would have gone and he might have just undercut it a little bit. Now it looks like the one can go. You can see by that camera shot, thanks Andy, that uh, the one can go, but the cue ball looks like it's got to hit the four. So how does he get on the two? He's looking to see if he can carom the one in off the nine, therefore missing the four, but then he's got the eight to deal with. And we, we know how important it is to hold your serve here, especially in the opening game, because you'd be playing from behind from there on in, because you've got to expect your opponent's going to break and run on you. Now he's looking at carrying me the other way, but I think it's too full on the nine to go in the pocket. He may just be trying to graze it on the right thinly and play safe. Oh, that was beautifully done by Torsten. He probably has left Shane the one ball at least to hit. If he's got any of it, he's only got their left side as we're looking at it. But if he can feather it, he can send it towards the four and come around the eight and get back down there near the seven ball. But that was a pretty darn good shot right there by Torsten. Now he evidently he can't go right at it. He's gonna have to kick into the side rail and get behind it try to send it up table and hold the cue ball, and that's gonna be tough to do as well, coming in at that angle. Nobody feathers balls better than this guy. How about that? How about that, huh? From that distance, what a touch. 
He's got to come one rail at it. And again, the problem here is not so much hitting the ball, but there's not a lot of places to hide the cue ball coming at it in this direction. And it's going to lengthen out on him just a bit. I think he's going to hit it kind of firm here. He needs some luck. I'm just going to slow roll this ball, come out to the center of the table and take the cut on the two. Again, no difficulty here. You're never that far away from the object ball. And this is exactly what the South Dakota kid hoped for, was a turnover in the first rack, and he's got that. He's got the angle probably now that's gonna require him to either draw for the four nine or play it in the side if he wants to play the four in the left pocket. A little hard to tell just how much angle he has. Yeah, that's the direction the cue ball's going, and he'll need to shoot the combination through the gap. I don't think he can uh, risk trying to get under the eight. Just before the diamond, that's the place. And I would be very surprised if he does not make this ball. Okay, just like that, he has reversed the break, and now he has control. The last time Shane was even close to being behind was in the hot seat match yesterday with Skyler. It went 5-5, and Skyler had the break, and then he wound up... Uh, with that tough three ball cut in the side, barely hit it, scratched off the four, and that was the difference. Shane's been breaking very softly, just about the same speed as Torsten, maybe not quite that much. Rack them up. Wow. Right, he's going to have to come forward with some inside here. He didn't uh, didn't get far enough down. It's truly a magic wand in this man's hands. That's two. While Torsten's racking, I want to take one last opportunity this evening before we go off the air to recognize our great industry partners that have helped make this event possible. The B BEF, the Billiard Education Foundation, OB, our great friends at AZ Billiards, Mike and Jerry, 
Simonis cloth, diamond billiard products, the best tables in the world, the magic ball rack, Kamui, Predator, and our newest partner, and proud to be alongside them, Cyclop Pool Balls. Thank you all, everybody, on behalf of the players here and what you did to help put this event together. That's a better break. I think he gave it a, like 10% more. And as you can see, everything is wide open. There should be no difficulty here. Just a, just a little bit of inside to hold it. through the gap between the nine and the seven here. He's just gonna punch this into the cushion and out about the distance the four ball is away from the rail. shot looks like a three inch putt. We'll be back on the air with you guys tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Pacific for the final day of the tournament where we will crown our eight ball champion and our all-around champion. Uh, consensus seems to dictate that Shane has that kind of locked up. It's certainly not official yet, but uh, with, a, with a win in 10 ball and a minimum second place here in the nine ball, uh, no other player finished high enough in both events where they even would, if they won the eight ball division, I don't think they could bypass Shane in points, but we'll confirm that tomorrow for you. Meantime, rack four. There's the one going. Took a little too much off of that. Now he's going to play the one in the side off the eight. At least I sure believe he will. And he'll just have to control the cue ball so he can play the three in the lower left corner here. Got to hit this firm enough, though, so it, it hits the eight flush enough to glance, and that may require a bigger stroke as far as uh, holding the cue ball. And then you got to be careful where the eight goes. That's ball in hand position there. I mean, nobody's that good. Well, I correct myself. He is that good. <gasps> God, just after I told you he was so great, he made a liar out of me. Wow.
It's almost shocking when you see something like that. Look at Shane in his chair. He can't believe it. That's stunning. Just just absolutely stunning that he would miss miss a ball that way. to eat his cue stick. He is so, just so frustrated over there, Shane is. I mean, the, an entire match can change on a shot like that, and we've seen it happen over and over again. But there's a long way to go, and Torsten has to play perfect. He's going to regain the edge here. And he certainly did not expect to come to the table in this game, especially after Shane made the one off the eight and got so dead perfect on the three. I think all the people around the arena here are in shock, just like the rest of us. Well, it won't do Torsten any good unless he can hold his serve again now and continue to keep the pressure on Shane and make him play from behind. But you really don't have any reason to think that he won't break and run here. I think the break and run percentages are probably somewhere in the 70 to 80 percent overall on this table in nine ball, maybe even higher. Percentage is going to go up right here. Shane's looking at the ceiling, he's shaking his head. I mean, it's, so, uh, it's so uncommon to see him like that because he rarely makes those kind of mistakes. This is just the littlest bit snug by the five. It does go, but he's got to use uh, the inside of the pocket he not have to cheat it a lot, but he's got to shade the jaw to the long rail. And probably just a soft hold with the cue ball because of the thinness, uh, because of the tightness of the shot, as you can see. And he's given it a little bit of an extra look, as he should.
And for one of the very few times all week, Shane finds himself trailing in a match. But tell me he had one hill-hill match in 10 ball on the outer tables. And the most uh, anybody else got on him was seven, and that was once or twice. Skyler in the hot seat match, and one other time, I don't recall who that was. But for, for him to be behind is uh, extremely rare in this event. Five going, okay. Just got to come back past the two ball so he'll be able to get down there for the three. Uh, he could come to the side rail and play the two in the corner, but he is looking on that line where his shaft is. It's just a little tougher to, to get there control-wise because you're crossing the line. And he barely got there, and he didn't get there. Yep, he didn't hit the, the left long rail where he wanted to, so the cue ball came short. He, he actually could cross this across the side or go three rails around the seven. And that doesn't lay natural either. I think uh, he risks running into the seven going that way. He did bank it, and that was the really the best way to play that and he banked so well. He was as big a favorite to make it cross side as he was to make it straight in. So a uh, little disaster averted there by uh, short position. But he's got to keep his foot on the gas here. And of course, uh, uh-oh, watch the cue ball. Well, he may have to spear this in. No, he's got an angle now. He can just follow it up, okay? At least it's not straight. Every game that goes by just adds more and more pressure and more and more importance to the following rack. Both players know that this is a one mistake championship. problem here with the two ball. It's going to have to follow the one ball down and bank the two. I'd like to get straight in on the bank and then he'll be straight in on the three.
four to three. Race to nine. First of a possible two sets for the 2014 U.S. Bar Table Nine Ball Championship. to three six looks at three seven the two's laying well to get to the three if it passes the eight in the lower right that's where he's looking and kind of looks like it goes and he already pointed to where he wants to be for the two at worst, I mean, he could play the combination if he if he absolutely has to. There's enough space between the balls, but I think he'd much rather shoot it by the eight. And it looked like it would pass. He's going to take another peek at it, maybe down the corner. No, he can't make it in the corner. The seven's got it blocked. If he plays it in the side, it's going to be incredibly tough to get on the four ball. And the other option is to run right into the three here. He's playing it in the side. And now he's going to have a problem getting on the four. At best, he could make it, stop, and bank the four. He's looking to go forward. Maybe he can clip the seven. It may help him. And it did. And that was not an easy shot to hit at that speed, at that angle. Four ball is still haunting Shane. He knows he should have the edge right now, and he's playing from behind here in the first set now. The only issue here is the six only goes in the lower left. There's plenty of room to get to it with the cue ball about where it is now. That would result in him having to bump into the seven. And uh, as we've said before, Torsten is so good at doing that from his straight pool background that that shouldn't present a problem for him. He's already planning how to get there off the, f off the five.
He also could come behind the six ball off the five and not have to flirt when running into the seven. He has both upper corner pockets for the six and also both sides should he so desire. And that's kind of maybe what he's looking at now. That takes a lot of the risk out of the rest of the rack. If position is tougher, but if he gets on it, then the last three balls are pretty simple. Well, with this angle now, he's not going to be able to get behind the six. He's going to have to take the cut. He's trying to get as much out of the angle he can where he might be able to avoid running into the seven. In other words, he wants to get as straight on the six as he can and still be able to make it. So he's got to be pinpoint here. Now I don't know if he can avoid the seven. But he, he couldn't risk going much further. Now if he can miss the seven, there's nothing wrong with bumping into the nine coming off the cushion. He had a uh, different angle, obviously, than I was able to read from here. And this is uh, laying very nicely for him. Two rails down to the kitchen. A little bit of middle left here. this. Oh, he's all right. <laughs> that eight is far enough out. It almost looked like Torsten kind of, for lack of a better way to put it, it looks like he, he, he jumped up on the shot a little bit. Just tried to give it that little extra at the end. And he might have twisted it just a touch too much threw the ball out of the pocket. And it's just it's just a uncanny how these things happen to Shane's opponents. And there's there's no intimidation here, none of that. It just it just seems to happen a lot. So advantage back to the South Dakota kid. This is going to be a little challenging here because the best he can do is just roll this in and he's going to have to take a little bit of a cut on the two in the side and probably wind up bumping the three ball with the cue ball. Notice how short the backswing is like that when you're jacked up over the ball like that. That's really essential to help you get your cue through to the contact point on the cue ball. And unlike most shots where your, your last peak 
before you pull the trigger, your eyes are on the object ball. When you're jacked up like that, a lot of times what you want to do is have your last, uh, your last look is at the cue ball. You've already got it lined up, but you've got such a small amount of white to hit. If your eyes are up on the target on the object ball, it's much more difficult to make that perfect contact. What a turnaround in that rack, huh? Eleven, Torsten breaks. It's going to be hard to hold the cue ball without coming down here to the short rail to play the two in the side. And there's not a whole lot of room down here between the five and the pocket, as you can see. The one's not on the cushion. He may even play this rail first. It may help slow the cue ball down a little bit, depending on how he feels about it when he gets over the shot. Well, that was a really fine pool shot right there. He did all he could with it, and I'm sure he's satisfied with this. I mean, yeah, he'd have liked it to have gone a, a foot less, but given what he had, he did very, very well with that. Looks like he might be too thin on this to just hold it on the long rail there if we play the three up table. And he certainly can't go around the colors. So let's see how he plays it. Just bump the three, I guess. It's got to stop. This is really tough. I mean, the shot's tough. He's got to get the cute tip out of the way in a hurry, and he's got just two little windows there between the 7-9 and the 8-9 to have a look at the 4, unless he just wants to put it behind the 4 and play safe. Yeah. He did something simple, and usually that's not a bad choice, but this guy can really kick these balls in especially uh, with the three ball being off the cushion like that. It plays just a tad easier. I 
he'll come look from this side. Torsten rewarded for a fine safety. I don't think he could have predicted that Jane was going to scratch on that shot, but just the fact that he made him kick that way has given him ball in hand. to bump the eight. I think he's perfect to hit it right on the number. A little weak there. Wanted to be straight in on that ball. most likely have to bump into the nine and hit it firm enough so the nine doesn't impede the eight's ability to go in the corner. All right, six, five, Shane still with the advantage. Well, once the two's off the table, uh, if the cue ball's about where it is now, he can get to the five, or if he's straight in on the three, he can get to the five. So straight in on the two is probably where he wants to be. And now he'll probably just hug it to the rail. Bounce off a little bit.
Seven and five. We sure had a couple of back and forth momentum swings here early on. Advantage Torsten, then advantage Shane, back to Torsten, back to Shane. And he certainly has control right now. Looks a lot more relaxed over there than he did 15, 20 minutes ago. <coughs> Excuse me. Took a little too much off the break there. I don't know if he can slide that four by that seven, six, seven, and graze it in. He has a couple of opportunities. Uh, I was going to say possibly to, to just play for a three nine, although that's tough to get on where the two is. And he could also try to open it up by playing the three in the lower left corner and running into the four or the six. And, uh, let's see how he goes about it. Now he's looking at the three nine. He can, he can come kind of right at the four ball, two rails. It's all about speed if he does that. I really think the better choice is to play to make the three and go into the six or the four. Because you're crossing the line coming for the combination. And then you might have to cut the three one way to cut the nine the other way, and that's really difficult. But that's exactly what he's going to do now, is play the combination. Use the four to stop the cue ball. He got as about as good on this as he could. Good shot. Once again, a situation there where he, he, took, to, he took what the table was going to allow him to take without having to try to do something extremely risky and creative. But his control of the cue ball from the two to go right at the four and hit it full in the face is a true sign of championship play. keeps the heat on Shane because Thorson has the break in the odd numbered racks. So Shane cannot afford to turn this one over. Yeah, the two is really tight here by the five, as you can see. Good camera work, Andy, thank you. And um, I think that's why you kind of saw Shane tap the chalk a couple of times after the balls came to rest. He really wants to play the two in the side because it's the easiest path to the three ball. He would, I mean, with ball in hand on the two for the corner, it would still be a challenge to get down here He might try to come right at the seven ball with the cue ball here. No, he's just going to take the cut, and he got pretty good on it. 
Now he's using the tangent line, of course, to play in his path. A little above center. That's a neat shot. I like when they do that. It's all about a ball short here of what he wanted to be. Not that it's going to be a problem. Inside English. Let his stroke out a little bit now. I think he's feeling pretty good. And why wouldn't you be feeling good? You're on the hill for the championship. Your opponent's got to beat you three straight racks, and one of them will be your break. with the seven ball here. It sure doesn't look like it passes. Is there a 7-9 billiard there? Kind of looks like there is. I don't really know how else he might open that up. And if the, of course, if the 7 goes, then it uh, doesn't matter, but uh, just from from this position, from where I'm sitting, it doesn't look that way, but I've been wrong many times this week, so uh, don't go by what I'm saying here. But it does look, it does look like it doesn't pass.
from that angle it's hard to tell but it still doesn't look like it goes well he's got the perfect angle to play for the carom if that's his decision We know it doesn't go if he's looking behind it. And of course, there's other alternatives to go into it here. Either uh, probably two rails. Hit it right on the number. Again, he's, he seems to want to go behind it. Uh, it's not going to get there, especially now. He's in a real bind here. He'd like to graze the left side of the seven and um, go all the way down to the upper right pocket, but I don't think he can do that. The side pocket might be in the way. I don't know the side's not in the way, but well, he probably can't get the cue ball much more than to the middle of the head rail where he's got his cue because of the thinness of the hit. He just wants to feather it, and it's going to separate the nine, which is going to leave, Sh if Shane's anywhere near the center of the table, he'll have a cut, regardless of the distance. He just hopes it's on the rail, and that's probably not going to be good enough. Well, he did about as good as he could with it. You can be sure he's shooting this ball. The only thing he's got to guard against here is the possible scratch in the upper left corner. I think it's thin enough to avoid that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you're looking at the U.S. Bar Table Nine Ball Champion for the third time. Shane Van Moning, undefeated in ten ball, undefeated in nine ball, pretty much has the all around as locked up as you can get. And our congratulations to Torsten Holman on a great second place finish. Uh, we'll keep uh, the camera on, uh, I think, maybe for a few minutes for some photographs. And uh, we have a beautiful plaque here to present to Shane. So on behalf of everybody here at the Action Report, CSI, Bad Boys, and Tar, stand by for some brief ceremonies, and then we'll see you tomorrow morning.